How you guys doing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Welcome to the Brown and Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast. I'm going to do something that I wanted to do for Patreon, but no one supports me there, so I'll at least put this out there, give you an idea of what it would be if you support me on Patreon and all that type of stuff. And uh, so... Since the race was postponed till technically today at Michigan, I thought I would make a video going over my lineups, going over why I picked these guys, why I made a lineup the way I did, and all of that. Please follow me on Twitter and uh, let me know what you think about this video. And if you guys want some more stuff like this, go support me on Patreon so I can make more stuff like this. Um, so let's get right into it. Looking at lineup number one, this was the one that I hinted at during my article where I was like, hey, I think a Hendrick Motorsports stack is going to be pretty good. I don't think it's going to be too bad. My my percentages are a bit higher than what I wanted, but I can live with that. It's not too bad. So you have Alex Bowman at 21.1%, Chris Busher at 44.1%, William Byron at 26 even Matt DiBenedetto at 29.5%, Chase Elliott at 27.9%, 21.4 for Jimmy Johnson. Now, what's surprising there is Alex Bowman is the least owned. I thought he would be the highest owned out of these guys other than Chase. I thought it was going to be Chase Elliott, Bowman, um, Jimmy Johnson, and Byron. That's where I thought it was. I was wrong. It, it was pretty much completely the other way. Now, when I first made this lineup, I had, I believe I had David Reagan and Austin Dillon on there as the two punts, but as I was looking at like, Austin starts 11th, you know, um, Right before the race, I looked at it, and I was like, well, do I really want to have Austin Dillon? Because this is a pretty good lineup. I I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of Hendrick stacks. At least if you pick, like, a Hendrick driver, I don't think you're going to pick the other three from that team. There's other people. There's Kyle Larson and whatnot. I think there's like I think I have, like, $2,400, $2,300 remaining on this lineup. Um, so I doubt there's going to be a lot of people leaving 2000 on the table and not taking any Dominators, not taking any of the bad guys. So why did I pick um, Bowman? He started 20th. I like, As I said, I liked Hendrick Motorsports. Why did I pick Chris Buescher? He starts 31st. Chris Buescher, I think he can finish top 20 for sure. And if that's the case, you're going to need him because he's, he's dumb cheap and you need him. Byron, he started 21st. Now, everyone... If you looked at track history, you would see that William Byron is actually dog shit at this track. Um, I don't know why his ownership is at 26%. That just doesn't... Um, I don't understand that at all. But whatever. Matt DiBenedetto, another guy starting in the back. He's starting 29th. I think Matt DiBenedetto is going to finish in the top 20 as well at this track. And uh, looking at it that way, I have the two biggest point differential guys, at least like this on the safe side. That's Busher and DiBenedetto there. And then you got Chase Elliott, a guy that I think, oh, excuse me, oh, Chase, Chase Elliott is a guy that I think is going to be up in the top five today, tomorrow. As you can tell, I'm pretty tired right now. Uh, and then Jimmy Johnson is just Jimmy Johnson. I was hoping no one would have him because everyone bitches about Johnson not being good, and yet people keep playing him. So not sure what to think there. Moving on to my second lineup right here. We got Kyle Busch, William Byron, DiBenedetto, Larson, Newman, and Ryan Priest. Now, I don't get Ryan Newman. Um... He should easily be at like 20% ownership. I was, I'm stupid, stupid light on Newman. I only have him, I have him in one lineup. I, him and him and uh, him and Blaney are the two guys I regret. I regret, I regret not having enough. Of. But anyway, Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch, he starts 15th. Uh, and William Byron, he starts 21st. Now, the same amount of people got Kyle Busch and William Byron. I don't understand that philosophy. I figured Byron would be lower owned, Kyle would be higher owned. Either way, I get Kyle Busch at a one out of every four guys there. Yet again, Matt DiBedetto is already there. Kyle Larson surprises me. He starts 22nd. He's expensive. I didn't, ex I mean, I knew he'd carry ownership, but 33, one out of every three people put Kyle Larson. Dude, I don't think he's going to. I don't think he's going to do that well. If you look at what Larson has been doing recently, I mean, his last two finishes, um, 
Pocono and Charlotte. I mean, he he has he's finished pretty bad now. Granted, he uh, he won the All Star race, but he hasn't really done anything other than that. He hasn't shown any speed on the bigger tracks. Not too big into Larson, so I I I I did a good job at steering away from Larson, but I guess I'm I'm right with the field there at 32%. Uh, Newman, like I said, he starts 18th. If I would have known he was going to be at 8%, I would have put him almost in every lineup. Um, and Newman Newman is so safe, it's ridiculous. Uh, look at where he's been finishing: 16th, 16th, 13th, 23rd. Uh, 18th, 16th, 9th, 9th, 11th, 23rd. Dude, this guy doesn't have a finish outside the top 25, and he never qualifies uh, up in the front. Uh, Newman, in general, is a safe play. I don't understand why more people didn't do it. I wish I would have had more Newman. And then same with Priest. Are you kidding me? Priest has been kicking ass on tracks like this. Are you kidding me? Ones where you're fast, you're in the draft, things of that nature. I don't think he's going to wreck. Yeah, sure, he's a little volatile, but for crying out loud, and Ryan Priest is at... 20, he started in 28th, and he on only 7% have him. I, I wish I would have been over um, weight on Ryan Priest. And now, my first lineup was a Hendrick Motorsports stack. This one was, hey, I'm going to use Kyle Busch and Byron because I think Byron's going to be low-owned. I'm going to throw in a couple place differential plays with some chalk, so I threw in De Benedetto, Larson, and then I threw in two punts, or two guys that I think were going to be low-owned, and that's Newman and Priest. That worked out right there. Moving on to the third lineup. It's Alex Bowman, Chris Busch, or Kyle Busch, Elliot LaJoy, and Reagan. Now, I wanted to make a. I wanted to have two lineups with Kyle Busch. That is what my plan was when I started. That's what we ended up doing, and um, I wanted to go a different direction. Last time I went with uh, with with more chalky plays. Like I had De Benedetto, I had Larson, I had all those guys. Here I wanted to try and steer away from them and just carry one type of chalk play, which it really didn't end up doing. Like chalk to me is anything over 25 on these stupid NASCAR things. Um, so uh, Alex Bowman, 21%. Chris Buescher, ha oh, half the field has him, basically. Kyle Busch still at 26. Uh, Elliott, 27. So that's fine there. I want to go a different direction. So Corey, Le Corey LeJoy is stupid cheap, and he's at 11 percent own and then Reagan is at 6.1 uh, so that's what I like to see whenever I whenever you hear me talk about percentages and and why they're important why I'm using them is because say if say if this lineup goes off okay only six percent of the people out of how many are in here out of out of 29 oh shit huh <sighs> Look, out of 26,000 people, so we didn't even fill this thing up, which is bad for us because DraftKings is going to lower the size of the next ones. But 6% of the 26,000 people only have Reagan. If he does good, that sets us up there. Moving on to lineup number four. Here you are. You got Ryan Blaney, Alex Bowman, Busher, DeBetadetto, Johnson, Legato. No, I thought, I thought Blaney. I thought he was going to carry 25% ownership. I thought people would be way, way all over Ryan Blaney because, yeah, sure, he's a little volatile here and there, but he knows how to race, and, and he's a Penske car. They're going to have speed at this track. Uh, yet again, Bowman figured not a lot of people... Uh, well, I mean, Bowman's my favorite guy, so I figured I'd throw him in here as well. Uh, getting place differential again with Chris Buescher, DeBenedetto, then kind of getting cute with Jimmy Johnson and Joey Logano. Um, Logano being at 35.9% owned is retarded. I don't understand that at all. I threw him in there in one lineup. I have I am under owned Joey Logano versus the field. And do you know why? Because I thought this would happen. I thought we'd end up racing on a Monday. We're going to have a competition caution tomorrow. They're probably going to pit. Logano has a good chance of losing the lead either during the pit stop or on one of the restarts. And... I don't think we're going to get the race in tomorrow either. <sighs> Logano is a terrible play looking at it right now, man. There's no way in hell he's going to fucking perform tomorrow because he's going to get passed. There's going to be a competition caution. And, okay, so say if the competition caution is like on lap 20 or 15 or something, like you're going to have Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., uh, the Hendrick guys. They're going to be at least moving up positions. They might not be winning the race or leading the race at the start, but they're going to pass people. 
and uh, because of that, I, I highly regret using Logano right now, and I wish I would have faded him. Moving on to a, another Ryan Blaney lineup that I centered around him, I wanted a low-owned Ryan Blaney, so we have uh, low-owned Ryan Blaney, Chris Buescher, uh, Matt DiBedetto. Now, the reason I put Blaney with Chris Buescher and Matt DiBedetto is because I'm trying to offset the ownership that they have with Blaney. For example, right here, Chris Buescher has 44.1%. Matt DiBedetto has... 29.5%. Now, if you use him and Blaney, and 11% of the field has Ryan Blaney, like that's within the 2,000 or the 2,600 people there, or the 26,000 people in this stupid contest. <sighs> Sorry. Only 11% of the 26. A uh, thousand people have, and that's like what is that? Twenty, twenty-six hundred and like ninety-two or something. I don't know about that. Maybe twenty-seven hundred, possibly. Um, that's fine with me. Uh, whereas like thirteen thousand could have like Chris Buescher or something like that. So um, that's just how I'm trying to play there. Ty Dillon thought Ty Dillon would be higher owned as well. Thought he would be closer to twenty percent, but he's at ten point three now. Ty Dillon has not really done a whole, whole lot this year, uh, other than still being consistent, but he's he's won stages, you know, he's a bit aggressive, I think this is where strategy is going to come in, and I think they got a good chance, and then yet again I have Elliot, and then I thought I'd throw Truex in here because I wanted, um, I wanted another chalk play, or at least a guy who I thought could finish up in the front, and that's why I chose Truex there. Moving on to my sixth lineup right here, we have Chris Buescher, William Byron, Jimmy Johnson, Eric Jones, Larson, and Suarez. Now, Suarez basically has the best car based on practice speeds, based on where he was running during practice, and just where his standings are in practice. Um, I thought that would steer more people to... Daniel Suarez. Now, granted, he's at 24.3%. I thought he would be a lot higher. I thought the I thought the main I thought one of the more interesting stacks would have been Logano and Suarez, just because you could have made that work very easily, and you have two fast guys. But they obviously did not want to do that. Larson yet again at 30%. Eric Jones is stupid high. Like, what the fuck are you owning Eric Jones for? Straight the fuck up. I have one lineup with Eric Jones, and what the fuck do people see in Eric Jones? I don't understand this, man. He's so fucking volatile. Yeah, sure, he finished third at Pocono, but he wrecked at Charlotte. I don't know if he wrecked at Charlotte. Yeah, he wrecked on fucking lap four. And then he's fucking volatile, dude. He's, he's DNF fucking twice this year. Started, I mean, finished 40th, at least in the two I've seen here. Um, he's not safe. You know who's safer than fucking Eric Jones? And do you know who's safer and who has a bigger uh, chance of actually helping you out and win something? Fucking Alex Bowman. The 24 car, the 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 nine car, the 48 car. Those guys. That's why I centered around Hendrick. I would rather trust a Hendrick car than some volatile Eric Jones. Like that's what I mean. That's why. Like, I thought he was. I thought Jones was going to be way lower owned. That's why I picked him. Um, trying to go against just what everyone does. Now, usually some weeks I have lower percentages on drivers than others. <sighs> <sighs> Sorry, but um, this week I just end up eating a lot of the chalk, a lot of 20% plays here and there. So let's move on to my seventh and final um, rendition right here of my lineup. Well, not my final, but my last one for DraftKings. So I have Blaney. Yet again, thought he'd be higher on, but thought I'd throw him in there. I like where he's at. Alex Bowman playing because I think he's going to be low on. I think he has a good chance to dominate. Kurt Busch, GPP play. Straight up throwing him out there. He starts seventh. I heard people say they don't like Kurt Busch because he has to do so much tomorrow. If I want anyone who's going to be consistent, speaking of consistency, a lot of those Hendrick drivers have had consistently consistency now. Kurt Busch hasn't had the consistency like he has had at the beginning of the year, but it's still not too bad. And I figured that would push his ownership down, which it's at 11%. That's that doesn't happen a whole lot, so I'm fine with that. Then you have William Byron, Kyle Larson, and Bubba Wallace. I thought Bubba was going to be lower owned, man. Um, I don't get how Reagan is like at what 10% and Bob Wallace is at 22%. Not too sure about that at all. And then uh, moving on to my FanDuel lineups, we have this right here. Let me load these up on the fucking website. Blah, 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 blah. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's load, let's load, let's load. Oh, so here, we, here we go. So my first lineup that I made... Um, 
got to get these stupid fucking things open. Okay, so you have, uh, I, I yet again did a Hendrick Motorsports stack just because I thought that would be an interesting play. I thought it's the way to go. So you have Jimmy Johnson, 16% uh, owned here. William Byron, 18% owned. Chase Elliott, 26% owned. Ryan Priest, 9% owned. And Alex Bowman, 13.2% owned. Now, I don't know exactly um, what's causing the percentages in FanDuel because I am terrible at guesstimating here. On these stupid ass things. Hold on. Very good. But um, I don't get it right there. Um, he, he, like the, these guys are way too low. And like Ryan Priest, you're telling me that ten percent of the field has them? No, that's freaking nuts, man. I don't get it at all. I'm so mass confusion. I'm I'm so I'm so confused. Just do not. I don't get it at all. Just do not get it. As you can tell, I'm, I'm rambling now. Um, and then my second lineup here was people that I was just comfortable with and wanted to see how it's going to go. So you have DiBenedetto, 18% owned. Alex Bowman, 13th. Chris Buescher, 26th. Only if it went out of four people off Chris Buescher, thought it would be higher there. Kyle Busch, one out of four people as Kyle Busch. And then uh, William Byron, 18.9% owned. Um, I like it, but man, I, I thought DiBenedetto would have been higher especially on FanDuel, same with Chris Buescher. Half people on DraftKings have him, and uh, only 25% of the people have him on FanDuel. But that is my thoughts right there. And uh, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Feel free to tell me what you think about this, and thank you guys for listening.